Tonight's top EU stories from the unit website include Wasted, the millions Britain has poured into aid for the Congo. Barroso in urgent push for an extra 2.7 billion euros for the Commission budget. Let's vote for a European people. Poland pits itself against the European Union climate promises. Plus, the EU won't survive a decade of stagnation, George Soros says. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the Unit Nightly News. First up, from our homepage. Hundreds of millions of pounds of British aid money poured it into a corrupt and conflict-ravaged African country have been wasted, a damaging official report reveals. More than half of European Union projects aimed at bringing stability to the Democratic Republic of Congo have failed to deliver any results, spending watchdogs have said. Auditors issued the scathing findings after assessing aid programmes which received 1.6 billion euros in funding from the EU between 2003 and 2011. During that period, the UK gave the DRC, a vast mineral-rich nation plagued by poverty and civil war, around £240 million, but more than half of the aid has effectively been poured down the drain. Now, I keep saying this, mainly for effect, but really, it's not all bad. I mean, during the period, the DRC government ministers did grant themselves pay increases to help them sustain the vital role they play in plaguing the people of the Congo. In total, government pay increases amounted to 800% over the 10-year period. The European Commission is in danger of running out of money and failing to meet its financial responsibilities by mid-November, the European Parliament heard. Opening the Parliament's plenary session in Strasbourg, Parliament President Martin Schulz said he had been contacted at 7.30am yesterday by President of the European Commission, José Manuel Barroso, who was seeking urgent approval for a €2.7 billion Euro supplementary budget for 2013. Mr Schultz said the message was that by mid-November the Commission will no longer be in a position to shoulder its financial obligations. Mr Schultz went on to say the difficulty had apparently arisen because of a shortfall in customs duties and he said, I am bound to take it seriously. Well, can I just say that I'm astounded. Um, this is better or perhaps worse than I expected. Yesterday I was a little disappointed that it looked like Italy would pip Ireland to the post as the next member state to crash and burn in an economic fireball. Never for a moment did I think that today I would be announcing that the EU itself would announce that it's insolvent. Well, well, things are taking a turn. A quick look through our legislation section and I can see at least 10 billion euros in aid and support funding obligations outside of the EU. Well, folks, what do you think the EU will do now? Write in with your thoughts and we'll cover your ideas in the show. Since there is no clear concept of solidarity among the nations of the European Union, it is time to create a nation based on common political project. According to a Spanish philosopher, the 2014 European elections should be the first step. Because Spain is not an ethnic nation, nationalism believes it has been an open door for founding its own political nation. Similarly, we hear that since there is no European people, it would be better not to go any deeper into the project of the Union. Certainly a state without a common language and culture will find it more difficult to govern itself. But to idealise a common language and culture to fever pitch was never a good idea. Now, to use in somewhat tortuous fashion the cosmopolitan image of concentric circles, nationalism would restrict solidarity to your own kind through family, friends and acquaintances. Sympathy would be limited to the big family of your fellow countrymen, to those who sharing the same language would shape a particular vision of the world. 
In summary, the naturalist thesis that empathy, altruism, develops in concentric circles is wrong, and to extend, stroke, stop solidarity to and at the people who are with me is absurd. But all of this is based on a worse fallacy. A linguistic community is so different from the rest that it must govern itself politically. Hmm. What a load of complete tosh! This article makes no consideration for the heritage of a nation, the sacrifices of its ancestors. This is a pathetic vote of sympathy that understands nothing about the concept of empathy. Look, Mr. Mikel Arteta, let me explain the difference. A man falls down a hole and hurts himself. He is stuck and cannot get out. The sympathetic individual climbs into the hole and weeps with the man. The empathetic individual reaches in and helps the man out, perhaps with a hug and some kind words. Your philosophical notions are foolhardy, as are your notions of altruism. Altruism always has a spiritual payoff. Your idea in this article are not altruistic, they are submissive. Sir, you should step outside of your scholarly research studio and take a walk in the real world. European ministers are sharply divided over proposed promises on carbon cuts as part of a United Nations negotiations. A draft document shows with Poland at the forefront of opposition. A meeting of environment ministers in Luxembourg is meant to agree a joint EU stance ahead of UN climate talks in Warsaw in November and December. The EU and UN meetings will be the litmus tests of whether the latest UN report on climate change is spurring or slowing the appetite for international action. The draft, seen by Reuters, says the main outstanding issue for the European Union related to mitigation commitments or efforts to make fresh promises before 2020 within the UN context... OK, let's cut to the quick. This policy of regulation and carbon control has slit the throat of manufacturing industry across Europe. It, in combination with the fiscal policy and the notion of too big to fail, has terminated the economies of Europe. And yes, I use the word terminated very deliberately. The European Union and its nations are now past the point of no return. It is way beyond the event horizon. What will have to take place from here is a complete revolution of societal structures. I have much more to come on this topic a little later in the show. Many nations have lived through stagnation and nations have always survived, Soros said in comments at the end of a panel discussion at the Global Economic Symposium in Kiel. However, the EU is not a nation, it is an association. This is in formation and will not survive a decade of more stagnation, so we are facing an eventual breakdown of the European Union. While the fact that the rules governing the euro weren't a topic during Germany's general elections last month showed that the euro crisis is over, Europe is far from a equilibrium state, he said. The euro crisis transformed the European Union into an association of creditors and debtors that is by its nature compulsory and unequal, and that has the potential of destroying the EU altogether. Today in our video library, this video takes an in-depth look at the numbers to describe the situation in Europe. Now bear in mind that this video is recorded in February this year, and the situation as we have been reporting has got worse since then. Now in this video, Stefan Moulineau of the Free Remain Radio goes through the statistics for national debt, GDP to debt ratios, GDP to earnings, unemployment, state and private borrowing. And as you will see, the numbers paint a desperate and bleak picture for the national economies and the European Union itself. With massive debts, huge regulatory burdens, enormous unemployment, it is going to take incredible change just to restabilise the nations of Europe. So, what would you do? How can government change? What should stay? And what should go? Comment or email us with your thoughts and ideas on how we fix this mess. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the Unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon.